Hey everybody, welcome to our evening stream. We are playing Legacy at Sea. It is a game that's currently in development by DPH Games. Um, and we're going to be doing a demo here, uh, acting as pirates at the high seas. Um, we have with us Dan, who is the creator of the game. Dan, do you want to say anything else about it? This game has been in development for about six years, and we finally got it to where we think it's um, actually pretty easy to learn. There's a lot of stuff, um, but you know we think it's it flows all right, and it has a story feel to it. It's actually a, a historical, it, I guess I'll call it historical fiction, but it's it's a historical game in that you're playing actual captains and. I'm actually surprised other than Merchants, Mer Merchants and Marauders, there's really not many pirate games that sort of take on the actual stuff. It's more all sorts of other stuff, you know, uh, raiding each other's ships or racing around islands and all fun stuff, but it's just not very historical. So this is an attempt to be um, pretty historical. So what you have is in your hand, uh, you were dealt, oh good, I can see hands. So you were dealt two captains. By the way, Amanda, this is the final art for the captains. Excellent. So the artist actually submitted seen those, yeah. stuff. That looks really nice. Yeah, so uh, you have two captains and you're gonna choose to play one of those two. So there's some historical information up top and then there's a bar which has leadership, guile, and then maybe it says mercy or ruthlessness or a coin, depending on who you have. Um, and that is going to be your starting stats on your player board. So you start out with X number of leadership and X number of guile. Mercy and ruthlessness are kind of your reputation. And that comes into play throughout the game. Uh, if you're merciful, you get some places are much friendlier to you, or to you. If you're ruthless, your stats start out a little higher. Then down below, we all have, well, all players have nine cards in their plunder deck, and you're going to get rid of two of them based on your captain. So what you'll see is cannon, crew, and maneuverability on these cards, and a number on top of that. So if you see two, three, two, that means two of the cards are cannon based, three of the cards are crew based, two are maneuverability. And uh, that captain is better at using crew. What that means is you have six, you're gonna choose one of six ships. And if you look at the blue ships here, get this guy out of the way. Um, your purple, well, blue for colorblind Dan. <laughs> uh, the number in the upper left-hand corner here is the ship's maneuverability, so how fast it is. Um, the, the uh, if we look at this sloop, there's a cannon. This is gonna be what you start with. Now the black cannons are 12 pounders and the gray cannons are six pounders. So in terms of the game, a black cannon counts as two gray cannons, essentially, it's pretty simple. And then the crew icon. So the sloop is gonna start with one black cannon, which is two cannon and two crew. Now I couldn't get, the, the cannon is the cannon that we have the models for and the ships are a, a slimmed down model, but the crew I couldn't get to upload into Tabletop Simulator, it had too many, uh, too many features for this to have. Now the rest of this is storage space. So the sloop doesn't have a lot of storage space. So if you look at the card next to it here, you'll see a galleon. And a galleon has one cannon, starts out with three crew, has a ton of storage space, but it has one maneuverability. So it's a much less maneuverable ship. So the first thing you're gonna do is choose which captain you want to play and discard the other one and then you will choose which ship you want to play. I probably should have taken the 
which one's not being used here? Um, yellow, I should have been using yellow as an example and I could show you the cards and stuff. Well, purple's not being used. What is? Oh, blue is purple. Never mind. Blue is purple in this case. <laughs> So what I would do, because we've had some trouble with this, is when you pick the ship you want, just set it up here next to your player card and then set the other two aside. Because even when we lock them down, sometimes you click and then the ship below pops up above and messes you right up. So we should start with picking our captain first. Yes, because your captain may dictate which ship you choose. Although it doesn't have to. Okay. I'm going to be Calico Jack because I like his name. And you like Calico Cats. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so now if people are, the problem with me explaining this is I don't think anybody watching could see, but so there's what the captain card looks like that I was talking about that has, so you're gonna take your uh, leadership and set it at one. So it's this cube goes here to one. Okay. And your, and your guile is gonna be set at three. And that's where Calico Jack starts out. I don't have those locked because, you know, then we'll let everyone else choose. Okay. So How again, do I see is... like zoom in on a card? How do you? Yeah, I'm trying to remember. You hit alt, hover over it and hit alt. Ah, there we go. Uh, so Amanda, uh, you need to look at your flip over your plunder deck and take out round shot and small boats. Look at small boats is right on top. And round shot. Oh, wow. That was easy. Let's go out of the game. Yeah. Wow, I feel like this is a dexterity test. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to pick Anne Bonnie. Okay, are you going with the sloop? Or you haven't picked your ship yet. I I don't know. That was there. Oh no, you can see there's other. Oh ships. oh okay. And there's ships on the other side too. And F flips them. All right. So. Do you know what ship you want, Trish? I don't quite yet. Okay, so your Black Caesar. Here, let me get the cards out for you. Round shot and overtake. Um, um, I think I'm gonna go with the Brigantine, Brigand, Brigandine, Brigantine, whatever. Brigantine, yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of cut, split the difference between. Kind of I'm actually going to go with this loop. Okay. Ah, and it just flipped in it. So nope. your plunder there. Okay. Whoops. Help you with that. Get this. I just tonight. there's two. Uh... So the brigantine starts. I'm going to lock this down with L, so the ship doesn't move on you. Um, so there's a couple a cannon and then a couple of crew from the Witcher. <laughs> Is that what they're from? Yeah, because I just could not get my crew stuff to upload. All right, so you're going to use uh, the sloop, did you say? Yeah, but I now sure. I've got these two cards somehow stuck together. There we go. Let's get this here, and I'll lock it down on you. And the cannons are based on our captain's card, right? Uh, they're based on your ship. Oh. So you see the little icons there? Yes. That's what you start with. You can put anything in any of these circles. So if you wanted to have a ship full of cannon, you could, but then you can't really carry much else. What if I kill off my whole crew and just fill it with plunder? Uh, you can't plunder without crew. <laughs> <laughs> A little okay. technical. It's a little Whoops. technicality. Technical yeah. issue. <laughs> Damn you for your historical accuracy. Yeah. Why is this every time the ships move here? I don't know why that is. Okay. So 
the player that's going to go first is actually the captain with the lowest number. And there's a number in the upper left-hand corner. Kelly Ch Kill Jack is a five. Black Caesar is a seven. And Anne Bonnie, I can't see the number. I think number list. I think she's like a three or four. So I think Anne Bonnie goes first. Also in your hand, you'll see you have um, a prospect card. And that you can place face up on your player mat here under active prospect. Those are going to be like a miniature goal, a uh, mini goal that you can go after. We found without those, you just felt like you're kind of wandering around. I mean, that's what pirates did. <laughs> so do you see the prospect card in your hand? The other two cards in your hand are captain skill cards. Here, I'll grab this for you, Trish. Key to kindness. And Eric's, it's this one here. So these aren't secret, they're public, but all right. And so you don't need this captain card either. Let's just chuck that out of your hand. Now, the two cards you do have left in your hand are captain skill cards. And you can use them. Let me just bring one up if anyone's watching. So there's some iconography on here. Basically, if there's an hourglass that's um, dark on uh, either end, you can use that sort of at the appropriate time. Uh, in, this in this case, when you run into a storm or a pirate hunter or a warship, you can play this card and avoid them because you had a bad thing. Other cards will have a, a darkened part at the top of the hourglass, which means you need to play it during your turn, or at the start of your turn, I'm sorry. And then um, some will have a broken ship, which means you play it during a plunder. Pretty much the wording on this stuff is going to let you know when you can play it, but it's mostly the start of the turn ones that are... Um, we ever get more of these back, or these are the only two we get for the whole game? Oh, no, you'll get them for various uh, either plunders or things that happen when you're sailing and okay. so yes you will very likely gain more captain skill cards um so basically what happens is during your turn if you look at the map here you'll see it's there's black lines and the map is divided into sectors so there's two ocean cards in each sector and one sail um um, icon, I guess, for lack of a better term. And so these are the spaces you're going to be moving th uh, through when you when you play. So you can, during your turn, you can either sail or plunder. Those are your two choices. Uh, when you sail, you can sail up to two spaces. So if I am blue and I go here to here, I've moved two sectors, one sector here, one sector here. And then when I land here, I'm going to draw a sail card. Or if I sail, I can sail to a port. And if I land at a port, I draw a port card. So hopefully the logic of this is pretty <laughs> straightforward. Um, if I start my turn, uh, after I draw the sail card, these two cards are going to get turned face up. And so next turn when blue starts, they can choose to keep sailing or they could choose to plunder one of the ships that is available to them face up. Kind of good, good so far. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, yep. A lot of the rest of this is going to evolve as you play. Now, victory point wise, you get one victory point for every five coin or goods that you have. Um, you get victory points for uh, completing prospect cards. You get victory points for ships that you plunder. And uh, when we get there, I'll remind me, I'll show you up in their flags. They have a different number. That's the victory points you get for plundering them. And then um, lastly, there's these two legacy cards that come out. And they're different each time you play. There's only six of them right now. And they, they offer some other victory points. So now the revenge one is Arabella comes out. Uh, when there is, I should, I, she needs some explaining anyway. Let's go with English Legend first. So, English Legend is at the end of the game, 
the pirate that has plundered the most Spanish ships will become an English legend and they get three additional victory points, but they must plunder at least three ships to get this card. Now, if you go to the upper right of the game board, Arabella sort of forced me to explain this part first. So these are the story cards, and this is what triggers the end of the game. So we're going to start out with a story card. The first five are blue, and then the next five are red. Oh, figures. Um, so the red start things, the English and Spanish start getting fed up with the pirates and stuff happens. But the blue cards are going to set a tone of what's happening. Uh, again, this is sort of trying to put in some historical stuff. The first card that I flipped and will go into play is Doldrums. So you know how I said you can sail up to two spaces? Well, as long as this card's exposed, you can only sail one. <laughs> so what, what are Doldrums? <laughs> doldrums is lack of wind. Ah, OK. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's the sailor's terror. If you just hit no wind, you're not going anywhere and just sitting in the ocean. Gotcha. OK. So, halfway through the game here, we're going to hit the red cards. When the first red card is flipped and resolved, then Arabella is going to come out and be placed at an island somewhere. And you need to go to Charleston and buy a couple of silk and then go to Nassau or wherever she happens to be and pick her up. And if you have her at the end of the game, you get an additional eight victory points. So she's fairly valuable, um, but a bit of a pain to get. So that's all the stuff going on with points. Uh, and now I think you're, the rest of it will explain as we go. I think you're ready to play. So Eric, <laughs> um, you are green. So you're Correct. starting out here, present day Cuba. You have a, um, a uh, prospect card, which asks you to go to Tortuga and then up to Charleston. So Tortuga is over here. Okay. And they're all labeled with letters, so they're a little easier to find. So you may, for lack of any other reason to start your piracy, you may want to head in that direction, but you're only gonna go one space, so I guess <laughs> you're gonna go here. Yeah, so just... So you, you go there, so then you draw, you can flip over one sale card, and if that's hard for you to do, I can do it for you. Go for it. I... You just flip it over, and then we can read this. So, Captain, I found papers with incriminating information about the governor of Puerto Barros. What should I do with them? So you have two options, Eric. One is you think you can use these papers to blackmail the governor. If you do that, you gain three coin, and you'll put that on your ship. Um, the flag here at A means A will then, then become an English controlled port. And I'll explain what that means. And then <laughs> secondly, you could choose, uh, you never know when you might need the governor and you can pardon all players that have lost Spanish favor. Well, no one's out of Spanish favor. So you may just wish to take the three coin. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll do option one. So you take three coin and you put it in a hold. Now your hold can hold up to 10 coin or any two items of silk, food, supply, or five coin and one item of silk, mm -hmm. um, food or supply. That's your capacity. So we've resolved this card. Uh, A becomes English. Now what this means is if you land up here at Bateria Bay, and you are out of favor with the English, you cannot draw a port card because the English really aren't happy with you. Right. And the last thing maybe we do during Eric's turn is we flip these two ocean cards. And if one of them were a warship or a storm, we'd resolve them, but they aren't. They're two Spanish ships, so they stay there. And he can decide next turn to plunder one of them or keep sailing. And so then the turn... I should turn on the uh, turn thing here. The turn thing advances to Trish. Okay. So because of the doldrums, you can only move one space. So it kind of limits what you're doing. And I have that 
that I want to eventually deliver food to Port Royal, which I'm not sure where Port Royal is. So Port Royal is over here. It's J. See that. Okay, so I need to get food, and I can only go one space because of the doldrums, right? Right, so you're pretty much going to head out here. So can I go to Tortuga, or do I just go to the Okay, so I guess I didn't, I didn't explain the... So there's yellow lines that connect the path. Ah, uh, I see, I see, I see. You must follow. Must to follow the line, okay. Well, then I guess I'm going to go over... Yeah, you really only have the one choice. Really? Okay, so you land on that sale, so you look at the first sale card. I can flip that over for you. Uh, all right, so you encounter a man that you recognize. Um, he's wanted by the Spanish for brazen acts of piracy. A man like this is valuable to either side. What should we do? Option one, don't just stand there, bring him aboard. If you do that, you add a crew to your ship, but you lose a Spanish favor. Um, and option two, at the, we'll, uh, at the next port, we'll turn them over to the Spanish and they can decide what to do with them and you increase your guile by one. Um, losing favor with this, I mean, you're gonna lose favor with the English and Spanish throughout the game anyway, but basically it makes their warships try a little harder and there's sometimes there's ports you can't go to if they're controlled by them. That's the effect of out of favorness. And how does Guile help you? So, oh, I, yeah, I probably should explain that too. Well, we haven't run into anything where you could use it. So on your player card, you'll see the uses for leadership and Guile. So leadership can be spent to escape pirate hunters and warships, try to reroll a dice against them, or draw an additional plunder card. We'll talk about that when we get to plunder. And Guile can be used to re-roll the captain die or all the plunder die. Again, that's part of plunder. Or you can re-roll a die after gambling. And you can only do these each of these things once in a turn. So Guile and leadership are, Guile's mostly it helps you re-roll die in various circumstances. Okay, I think I'm going to go for option two. Okay, so you're now more guily. And then we reveal the two ocean cards. And yeesh, an English merchant and an English treasure ship. So then it advances to Amanda's turn. Hey Dan, we had a question um, on, uh, on Twitch about when this game will be available uh, virtually or physically. Uh, physically, probably 2022, um, virtually, hmm, the problem is tabletop, I don't know, virtually, hmm, not too long, because we don't have a lot more to do with this game, um, probably could do that soonish. Probably do it in a month, I think. I have a couple, there's a couple of uh, prospect cards and or uh, sailing cards here that say, uh, you know, need a story or something like that. That's the story in it. It says need a story or we need a, I forgot what it says, but there's no, so that we could, because we, so we can't charge to play it, obviously. Um, so we would put it out and get feedback on it. Um, maybe that's something we can do about in a month. We can I'm make little, sure we put it on the Meepicon Facebook and yeah, Twitter I'm a little when we do. You know, concerned because I've had struggles with just Madoshi, which is a simple game, and then all of a sudden it's not working on Tabletop Simulator, and um, and I don't know why. And if you ever, maybe Amanda can help me with this someday. But I formatted the hard drive on my laptop, and it blew away everything on Tabletop Simulator that we put up. And I don't know why I did that, but I had to re-upload Affliction and everything else that's up there. Yeah. So we can, and 84 said thank you. So I moved my ship one because of the doldrums. So I pulled a sailing card and this is contamination, the 
Cooper failed to band the barrels properly, right. and that mistake would be disastrous. So not only do we have no wind, our water or food is probably poison. Yeah, this is getting like, a little too too ac historically accurate. Um, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna roll this nine sided die here. Okay. And hope for something good. Not good. Two. <laughs> Figures two. Some of the crew suffer severe food poisoning. Discard a crew. I only have two. Well, now you only have one. <laughs> so they just come off my ship? Yep. Okay, and how do I get more crew? I have to go to a port, right? Uh, you can go to a port and pay for them, but you need money to pay for them. So you're going to have to plunder or gamble at a port. Well, you need okay. money to gamble, too, actually. So I got to go plunder some people. So now it's going to go. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> now it's, now it's going to go back to Eric. Well, wait, do I reveal the Are you, cards I'm first? sorry. I was looking at the wrong color. Yes, we oh, do. Now brother. you have a storm. Hey, and there's, a storm. there's a little <laughs> wind. The good news is you got some wind. <laughs> well, at least we're no longer slow. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's not. So now you're going to roll, roll this die again? Yeah, you try to roll above a five. Six. Now you do okay. have, I didn't look at your, uh, okay, never mind. So you did avoid the um, storm Orange. damage. And you draw another captain skill card. No, oh, that's not bad. Where are those at? They're upper right here. Okay. Just one. And then we replace the ocean card with the face. Don't reveal. Card. Okay. Yeah. And now it's now it's My Eric's turn. So, so the way plunder works, if this is what you want to do. Um, is the numbers on the top of let's look at the spanish slave ship here so if you plunder this ship it's worth two victory points um that's the number up in the flag right this ship has two cannon two crew and three maneuverability so in order to plunder this ship you would have to roll higher than whatever the number is uh what you're trying to plunder and then if you're successful you'd get three coin one crew and lose a Spanish favor. Some of them will have, not, not one of them here, oh, down here, the small Spanish merchant does. Some of them will have a red circle. And if it has a red circle, that means if you use cannon to plunder this ship, you will destroy that item. So uh, that will come into play. Now, let me just pull from uh, Trisha's deck here. So what will happen is if you decide to plunder, you'll choose which ship you want to plunder. You're going to shuffle your plunder deck and you'll draw two plunder cards. And these plunder cards are going to tell you what, how you are going to attempt to plunder or give you a choice. So in this case, you'd use crew to go in small boats and it would be against their cannon number or you would use crew against their maneuverability number and if you were plundering that slave ship, we'd want to go after cannon, right? Because uh, it's a lower number. And I'll, I'll get to how that works. I just want to point out, though, if you use muskets and you're successful, you'll, you'll gain a leadership because that's down here on this card. So it pushes you to try to plunder in different ways sometimes. But let's say uh, you did small, let's say Trish was doing small boats. So she needs to roll uh, three, su three successes or more. Now the number of die she rolls is going to be equal to the number of crew she has. So it's two of these blue plunder die, plus you always roll this red captain die. And so she would roll and she would have uh, failed because she has two hits and she would take one damage for every cannon that is on the ship. Now she could choose to spend a leader, a guile, and say, I can't, uh, and say I'm going to re-roll all these dice and hope to get that result. You know, and, and uh, in this case, she would lose a crew, and she'd still not be successful. Um, you do have the option of once you reveal both of these cards, you have two options actually. One is you can say, "Man, I do not like this," and just sail away and not plunder. The other is you could spend a leadership and draw a third card and say, you know what? I have a maneuverability of five. I'd rather, I'm going to roll five dice against their crew 
much better odds. And if I'm successful, I gain a guile. Is that enough information for you to decide, Eric? And I can take you through it again. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I need more leadership. So both of these have cannons of two, crew of two. Yeah, there's really uh, and this, no difference other than the payout. Right. So this one you're going to get, um, why does it have three on those? Because the crew is worth a lot more. So this one you're going to gain three gold and a crew. This one would be eight gold and two silk. Okay. You, could, you could stay and plunder both in two different turns if you wish. Or I could just move. Or you can move. But I think I think I'll do some plunder here. I'm gonna go after the merchant ship. Okay. So we'll just put so. that on. So you shuffle up your plunder deck. And oh wait, you still have, wait, you still have all your cards in here. So you need to get rid of uh, uh, chain shot and false flag. So there's false flag. And there's chain shot. Missed. All right. Now you can you shuffle them up and you just take the top two off. Yep. And then F flips them over. So maneuverability is good for you. So you could do maneuverability in which you'd roll all the dice against their maneuverability of three. So you'd need four hits on essentially seven die. Okay. Or you could use crew and you'd roll three die and go against their cannon and try to get three hits. Odds are not as good. Yeah, I like the overtake as well. Yep, so we'll just take this out of play. And if you're successful, you're going to gain a guile. So take all of these dice here and you can hit R, which will roll them. Just all of them. Just drag, yep. Okay, so you got five hits, and you're going to take one damage for every cannon they have. So this small merchant has two cannon. So you have two damage tokens that you're going to put on your ship. Now you can put them here in the hull. You can put one on your sails. Um, probably should because you need room to put plunder. Maybe, yep. maybe not. I don't know. You can put that where you want. We'll let you decide. Um, and then. You're going to take this card and actually put it here to keep track of it. Uh, you gain two silk and you can stack that silk. Okay. Because you can have up to two in a spot. And you gain eight coin, which takes you one over the limit. So you can do three there and five there. So yeah, you probably do want to put it on the sale. And then you also get an out of favor token with the Spanish. Right. They're not happy that you did that for some reason. And then, um, as I mentioned, you gain a guile mm -hmm. because that was a result of you successfully plundering with this card. All right. And then that's your turn. So it goes to Trish. Okay. So. Where are you, blue? I would I would highly not recommend trying to plunder the English treasure ship at this point because you're just starting out. Right. And if they did damage, they'd do five damage to your ship. Yeah, I don't think that would work out well. All right. Although, if you wanted to live on the edge, you have a maneuverability of five. So, am I reading this right that I can go 
from here to over here. Here. Yep. Whoops. I don't think that's where I wanted to go. Okay. Yeah, there's uh, card locks in there. So you can lower, see the guy in your upper right hand uh, sort of side of your screen that has uh, barbells he's lifting over his head? Yeah. You can drop that way down and it'll keep the piece closer to the board. Makes it a little more easy to tell. So now when you pick up your piece, it won't pick it up as high. Okay. okay. That makes more sense. All right. So now you draw your sale card. Let's see. Where is that? And, is, and behind you, what's happening is, is this space is left open. The ships cycle through. So the sale card is over here. Uh, we'll flip this for you because you don't want. And so this is the story card. So this advances the story deck. And I think I mentioned only briefly that the game ends when the story deck runs out. So now we are no longer going to have doldrums. Instead, ben, instead Benjamin Hornigold has uh, pushed aside the colonial government at NASA and he takes control, creating a haven for pirates. So the flying gang has terrorized the surrounding waters, proclaiming NASA the first pirate republic. Every player gets to draw a captain's skill card. So you can hover over that and hit one, and it'll put it in your hand. And NASA becomes pirate friendly. And what that means is if you land at NASA, you can gain a crew and repair two damage for free. I'm heading to NASA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just because you didn't feed your crew right. <laughs> it was the Cooper, Cooper, Cooper. Yeah, salt. it's a Cooper that bans it. Now you'd still draw, and then the rest of this card says draw another sale card. So if you've, if everyone's gotten a skill card that they've added, so Eric, you should have another skill card. <laughs> you hover. Everybody over got a skill card. Yes. Nice. Um, now you just, just hit one. Easy so, what to it do? so you put that in your hand. So if you just hover over it and type the number one, it'll pull it in your hand. Okay, now for Trisha's actual sale card. Uh, the wife, this is little known stuff that used to happen. Uh, instead of expensive divorce, lower class men would often sell their wives. A man wish, wishes to purchase the freedom of his lover and would like uh, you to go pick her up. Um, so actually why they would do this is it would be kind of like a, because money was exchanged, it, it would be considered as a contract. But anyway, craziness, they used to, it didn't happen that often, but it did happen. Uh, so you can return his wife uh, and receive fair payment, um, get three gold, or he should know better than to trust a pirate and you sail away with the money. Um, and the wife? N no. Oh, okay. You're supposed to go pick <laughs> up the you're supposed to go pick up the wife and bring her back. Oh, okay. And so you just he pays you, uh, but you just sail off with the money promised. And, and lose, Engl lose English favor. Ma I need to reword that a little. Get Amanda on that. <laughs> I am good at editing. <laughs> uh, hey, you know, we're pirates, so I'm just going to sail off with the money. And... OK, so you can put eight coin up here. So I'll go ahead and do that for you. And then you lose an English favor. Now, I, I, it needs to be re reworded in terms of logic, not uh grammatically <laughs> maybe grammatically but logic is a little weird um okay uh so then uh we flip over these two cards and this is uh advance the story card So now it's a strong harvest. Commodities market's a fragile one. Particularly strong harvest has made food abundant in the region. It's great for almost everyone except for those trying to sell it. 
Uh, your food cannot be sold at any port. Oh, no. Hopefully you weren't planning on doing that. <laughs> well, I want to buy food. <laughs> well, buying it's okay. Oh, well, that's a relief. And now it moves to Amanda's turn. All right. I'm... Where's that friendly port? B? Can you move through a, another yes. player? It's okay. a big, it's a big ocean. One, two. You can also try to plunder another pirate. It's not advisable, but you have to start your turn in the same space with them. And then I'm staying here, so I get a sail card. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, Where he's moving right along, which is weird. Hmm. Okay, there's a slave revolt. Cartagena, um, abused by working long days, cutting sugar cane. The pirates are sympathetic to the cause and be welcomed there. So all merciful pirates get a captain skill card. And Cartagena now becomes a I'm port not. for merciful pirates only. Is anyone merciful? I mm. thought we know if we're merciful. Uh, be on no, your I... card, you're not merciful. It would be uh, after the uh, guile. No merciful pirates here today. <laughs> Just a ruthless one. Uh, so, uh, that was my sail. Nope, you it's... still draw another sail card. Why? Because nothing happened for you. Oh, OK. Yeah, there's one. Needs a story. JFK, DS, DLK. All right. Uh, so my first option is to spend a leadership and gain gold or spend a guile and get two silk. Uh, I don't have much leadership, so I'm going to spend a guile. Hey, and got so when stuff. Arabella comes out, I can... No, you have to buy the <laughs> silk from Charleston. She's uh, very particular. So picky. Yep. Okay, so that marks the end of my turn. Uh, nope, you got a you sailed right. Yeah, I so flipped flip these two cards. Okay. And it didn't, and they marked the end of your turn because you ran into a Spanish warship. Oh boy. So your choice is you can roll the ten sided die, mm -hmm. add your maneuverability to that, and subtract any out of favor tokens you have. That result will then be whether you take damage or not, and you gain a guile, or you can spend two leadership to avoid the warship. I don't have two leadership to avoid. Well, you're not I'm, doing that then. Guess I'm rolling. But I have a pretty fast ship, so. Yeah, and you're not any out of favor. So you're going to add four to this die roll. OK, here we go. Zero is a 10, by the way, a two. Ugh. Not a good roll. Wait. Uh, what am I waiting for? I Six. have some captain skills. Oh. Mm, no. That's on a plunder die, right? None of them help you here. You can okay. spend a guile and re-roll if you wish. Or take yeah. two damage. Or take two damage. Okay. No, so, I'm gonna try to roll again. All right. I don't know why, because I can never roll anything, but Ugh. three. So that went to seven. All I right, I'm done. I'll take two damage. Well, you can only do that once anyway. Yeah. So you take, take two damage. You do gain a guile back, however. Oh, that's good. Totally worth it. This is one of those games. I really want to play it in person. <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll be hopefully ha be happening soon. Yep. All right, now it's really the end of my turn. Now it really is Eric's turn. So Eric could continue to sail on. Now you can go two spaces, by the way, because the doldrums are over, or you could plunder this Spanish slave ship. Right. Um, I'm trying to get to where? Port Royal or Tortuga? Tortuga. Tortuga. Right? Based on this prospect? Um, yeah, I yeah, have to go to Tuga to then take the passenger to Charleston. Right, I am 
I'm not heading in the right direction, am I? That's not true. So I'm going to sail so here to here. Um, so, whoa, no, no, no. All oh, right. It's not bad. Um, I can explain what's happening on this card. So you're, are you green? Yeah. Um, was this card flipped when you got here? Yes. I forgot to read yeah, yeah. Okay, so what this card says basically is there's a disabled merchant. So we're going to flip these two cards. Uh, you're going to have a choice on this one, I guess. So this is going to advance the story. We'll wait a second for that. You can claim any one item off of this small merchant that's disabled. So you could take five gold or one supply. Uh, do I even have room for anything? <laughs> Uh, well, if you, th yes, because you can stack an item on top of um, the five coin. Okay. So then I'll do that. And then we're going to advance the story card again. And in this case, Rotan Island is basically has just become pirate friendly. And that doesn't change anything that happened in the other. No. And that's pretty much Eric's turn. Now those don't it just well, because, uh, let me read this card again. Discard the merchant ship, do not collect the plunder, replace it with a face down ocean card. So the combination just happened to be they both replace cards with face down ocean cards. Right. But you got free plunder. Mm, what? The barrel, right? Uh, if you supply or five gold, either way. Oh, okay. I was going to take a supply, and you said I could put the... Yep, you can put it right on top here. Now, I have a question. Would you be able to buy food at any port? Uh, pretty much every port sells food, yeah. Okay, well, in that case, I'm going to go up here. So now you get to look at a port card see what one of those looks like. I'm going to make sure that was shuffled because I don't know what it was. All right, so you have encountered a cautious port. They're wary of pirates. Uh, the merchants here will not do business with some. Ruthless pirates can buy items for one more gold than listed, so they're not thrilled about ruthless people, but you're not one of them. So, ooh, food is expensive here, however. Uh, food's normally one or two gold. So food is three here. Silk is three. You can buy or sell for the same price. You can buy crew for three. You cannot sell crew. That's what the asterisk means. You can buy supply for three. You can repair damage for two. And you can bribe Spanish officials. Additionally, you can gamble. So that's the bottom thing. And I forgot the thing on the upper right hand top is if you wish to take a loan, you can add you can oh, add yeah, 10 gold went out. but you take a negative 13 uh gold token that gets subtracted out at the end of the game okay so how does the gambling work so gambling you're going to roll a 10-sided die and if you roll six or higher you get some money if you roll lower than a four, you lose some money. You have to have the money to lose, and you do. All right. Can, well, let's, can, let's let's try a little gambling. Okay, and you can spend a guile to re-roll this once. 
Okay, where is the D? Oh, there it is. Sorry, I got your spot. Hmm? No. So R will, R, well, I think you hit flip. R will actually roll it. Okay, so seven. So you won uh, three gold. So you can add three gold. Cool. And if you wish to buy something, you still can. off a little bit? Yeah. Don't forget, Amanda. Mm -hmm. You get rewarded for plundering Eng English ships. Not yet. Is it my turn? Not, not yet. No, okay, that's what I was going to say. Can I buy some food while I'm here? You may. Cost you three, three coin each. So you could buy two food and get two coin back. So where's the bank? <clears throat> oh, right, right in front of you here. Okay, cool. Which, this is yeah. a tabletop simulator thing that wouldn't do this in the real world. So you wanna buy two food? So, whoops. Yes, indeed. No game tonight, huh? So, one. Wow, this is hard to. Okay, two. And you get two coin change out of all this. And there you go. All right, that was relatively successful. Yay. Now we can watch Amanda fail. <laughs> I'm very good at failing in this game. All right, but I was gonna go, so if I fail away, that'll go away? Yes. Cause I only have one crew right now, so that means I'm only gonna roll one. Only if you draw that card. Cards use cannon maneuverability or crew, you need a maneuverability. True. Card. Let me look at my and, captain. Thing. And your captain is good at maneuverability. Because he has three maneuverability cards. All right. Well, since you think it's a good idea, I I'm going to attack it. that English ship. I didn't say it was a good idea. I just <laughs> so I draw two of these. Yep. I'm going to flip, flip. Boarding or chain shot. Um, Those are both bad. What do I do if I want to pick another one? You spend a leadership. I have one. I could use oh. it. You're out of leadership and hope that this has got a sailing thing on it. It does. So you can use maneuverability against their crew. So you need three hits because they have two crew. Okay, so I'm rolling four blue dice plus the captain's dice, right? Yep, yep. And you're going to gain a guile if successful. Okay. Two hits. Would you need three? Oh, wait, but wait. Okay, so you're going to play. Seamanship. It gives you another. Luckily, your captain had some skill. Yes. He's not a very good leader, but he's got skills. So, so I you plunder that ship. Successfully plunder the ship. You gain five gold, one crew, and lose a favor with the English. Yeah. What the English then, ever do to me? And then we go to Eric while she's straightening that up. Uh, I'm going to go to here. And to here, to Tortuga. Now what are we doing?
go with. Now that I've actually sailed to Tortuga. Got two different things going here. So, you, yeah, you draw a port card if you're. Well, first, you actually take care of prospects before you draw. A, yeah, it says, yeah, it says resolve before drawing a port card. So, you're not actually resolving that prospect, but you're just actually just taking the uh, green passenger and putting them on your ship here. Okay. And now you can do the port. Okay, which is all the way. This side. Flip one card off the story deck. Resolve the story card. Another one. Jeez. Yep. Cruising through the story, huh? A little bit. Did they get more than one then. One of the things are, you know. Kind of Did I just pick up more than one card, or is that? Uh, yeah, you just ended the game, so. Uh. It's sort of, whoops. I have my hand on the wrong area. Where we, where we did the slaver vote, right? So next yeah. is this one. So... Woods Rogers, fed up with the disruption to the trade routes, English banker Humphrey Morris pushes Parliament to hire Woods Rogers to rid the Caribbean of pirate, the pirate scourge. All players take two English loss of favor tokens. And C is now controlled by the British. Sorry, Amanda. You were hoping uh, to where did that just go? Are there five of these still? This way again. That's a pain in the ass, but there we go. That all resolved. I don't think anyone had letters of mark, right? No. So then take another one of these. Did I do that wrong? Feels like it took all the cards. Why does it do that? <laughs> you gotta be fat. Yeah, it was fast and then it still took all the cards. I don't know. All right. Oops, sorry. Yeah. So I think only one port card had been drawn so far, right? Yeah. Oh, no, you did the story one. That's I just did the story one. So this is the yeah. one that actually. The pirates, some of the merchants are gullible, sell items to port for one greater gold if the pirate has guile greater than three. I think I have a guile of four. So now I can sell silk and buy silk. Is that what that's? Yeah, you can, you can, uh, you can sell silk to them for four. You can buy right. it for three because your guile is greater. Dan, right. how do I get more leadership? Can I? No. Uh, the most direct way to do that is by choosing plunder cards when they come up that you gain leadership. Gotcha. Otherwise, you'll get it through sailing uh, choices, mm -hmm. or rarely a, there's a skills card that does it. Okay. You don't just go to a seminar. Yeah. <laughs> You can. We, we you used to be able to buy it. Oh well, actually, you can. Uh, you can. Um, 
It is at some ports you can uh, drink rum with the crew, and I think that you have a chance of increasing your leadership by doing that. All right. So now I'm in port. I can can I sell one thing or one, or can, can I just sell everything? You can do as much as you want with that. Yeah. You How about uh, repairs to the ship? Is that done? Okay. So the repair the icon on the. Um, the negative one there with the blast is you can spend yeah. to remove a damage. So each damage you can remove for two coin. Okay. All right. So let's, this port said it would buy. I can sell. Okay. So silks are uh, four each. And that's two silk. That I can sell for five. Um, yes. All right, so that would get me 13 back. And then you that want was to repair two damage. Yeah, so that would take away four. And then go away. And you can rearrange all that coin. So How much can I have in a? You can pile this up. Yeah, actually, that's t that's ten right there, isn't it? Wow. So you can just take another ten if you want. Yeah, he did well at that port. Yep. Good thing you were Guiley and he had stuff to sell. And that's that's my turn, I guess, yeah. Yep. Okay, fun. All right, so I'm trying to get to Port Royal. Which means I gotta go down there. Okay. So we're still in the. We can move two, right? I think this is one, two, maybe. Is that right? Two Where segments? I was yep. at Nassau, or not Nassau, I mean uh, Bahamas. Yep, that's two. One, two, yep. Okay. So what's our next step? You draw a port card. And are you resolving a prospect? You do that first. No, she didn't get into a port. She's still. She yeah, I didn't make it there. I didn't make it there because it's there, and I have to go. I'm sorry. Here. I'm looking at the wrong ship. <laughs> so you draw a sail card, or flip a sail card. Okay, I got it. Place. Thank you. All right, you're running into an old friend. You're just running into all sorts of people. <laughs> uh, okay, an old friend. You come across another pirate ship. Upon closer inspection, you recognize the ship and realize that its captain is an old friend of yours. You meet up in the middle of the ocean. Option one, over some rum, he teaches you effective trick techniques for overtaking merchant ships. You can select and remove one of your plunder cards from your hand, and I'll explain why that's beneficial. Option two, he teaches you some tricks that he learned over his time as a pirate, increase your guile. So say you really don't want to use cannon, you could remove a plunder card from your deck that uses cannon, increasing your odds of doing something else. Or you can gain a guile. I think, I think I'm going to go for uh, gaining a guile. Okay. That's more straightforward. It's sort of a backwards deck builder ca uh, card. <laughs> like, remove <laughs> cards from your hand and make it... Well, part of any good de deck builder is being able to get rid yeah. of cards. It's not really a deck builder, but we had talked about that. Uh, and uh, you ran into a couple of Dutch ships. I, I don't think I've ever seen this game come up with the same nationality in each sector more times than tonight. 
And that's now to Amanda to not go to NASA like she had planned. No, I'm going now. Wait, it's not a pirate place anymore. Right, Woods Ro Rogers got there. And Oy vey. Okay. When I said um, that, I said you weren't going to be happy. All the pirate friendly ports are south. <laughs> Just because I moved north. Um, actually, I'm going to go to Bermuda. Hi, Carl. The Carl came in. I can't go to Bermuda. I still need more leadership. What do you mean? My, um, this card. Oh, well, let's pull a port cord and see what happens. Okay. Um, conservative port. People of faith reward the kind-hearted. Merchants here will sell items for one gold fewer to pirates that are merciful. I am not merciful. So I could sell. So is money or are items worth more at the end of the game? They're the same. So each coin or item you get one victory point for every five of them you have. But it's still, so it still makes sense to consolidate them. Um, it, it, you can, um, you can buy and sell them. It's, I would get what you need. I don't need anything, okay. but I can sell my silk. I'm wondering if I need money. Oh, well, money's flexible. Silk is good price here. It's four, so I would probably sell it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to sell two silk. So it's going to give me eight coins. Um, but then I want to fix my ship, too. That cost is... Two. Two. Each? Yep, so four. Give me back one it all together can i yeah um and then can i do also do the thing at the bottom yep okay so what if happens if it tells me i lose leadership but i have none to lose uh you can't do it but uh, i could win a leadership yeah so there is a rule about i don't know if it's even in there because it's so rare but if you lose leadership when you have no leadership your ship mutinies on you mm, oh, that's a bummer boy. that means i can't do the bottom thing then you're living dangerously <laughs> you could try it but you know how you roll dice yeah you would still play you just lose your just you just lose your captain and three, right. and three victory points well i guess i won't do that so I guess I'm done. Next. Back I'm going to move here and then here. Yeah, that's one of the things I've been balance, trying to balance is that gain loss of leadership, gain loss of guile, and timing of the ending of the game. Those are the three big things. Uh, well, you could pardon everyone's English out of favor stuff. Yeah, I think that's and, what uh, I'm going to do. You, did, you, did, you, did you take the two English out of favor tokens when you were supposed to? You didn't. You weren't paying attention. That's, well, that's when the port got turned over. That's when I went to the bathroom. Oh, I wasn't looking. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I think I think they're about to get pardoned. Yeah, I'm pardoning. Here, but... I'm going to give yeah, everybody a pardon. Thank you. So everybody loses their out of favor helped. with the English. It really helped Trish. Helped me a lot. Thanks. Yeah, you pirates are all in it together. And then these get flipped. Uh oh. Oh, double damn it. Looks bad. Um, so the order is that the Spanish warship goes first.
Um, you could spend two leadership to avoid it, but <laughs> probably wouldn't. Um, but it's my mobility plus yeah. a die roll. Yeah. Minus so any you... Spanish. Right. I think so I have you one. Like Amanda, you should be fine. <laughs> Because I have a six already to start. Right, you're on the edge of the ice over towards you. And do you know I was playing a war game the other day where I wanted ones and twos, and I could not roll a one or a two to save my life. <laughs> to save oh. my ship. Excellent. <laughs> was it? So Hardy rolled a nine, so you avoided the Sounds familiar, Amanda. Spanish, <laughs> and yeah, you gain a guile. You think, oh, I always roll low, so I should be good at this. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> and the same here with the pirate hunter. You might gain a leadership if you. So you roll against him. And basically, with your six, you need to roll a th above a three. Did you roll a two? Yeah. Uh, but I roll a two. A, you, you have a ton of guile. You could spend a guile and re roll. Is that true? All right, well, let's see what happens. Yes. That's not. True. <laughs> it's exactly what one that thing I didn't want to happen. You, you would have spent a leadership, I lied. Um, but you gain a leadership back, so it's a wash. Uh, so you take two damage. Damage. All right. Well, I guess it's time for me to do this thing. Well, plunder thing against the Dutch. No, I, I meant try oh. to do the key to kindness thing. You have three food. You only have two um, food. I only have two food. All right. Well then. Look, they have food on their ship. Yeah. Let me do that then. So what you do is uh, shuffle and draw two of these plunder cards. Or, well, flip them. You set them down here face up. One. True. You want maneuverability. There you go. So maneuverability versus... Dude, can you turn off the heat when you get a chance? What? Cannon. Um, so... This would allow you to roll five die plus the captain's die. Pretty good chance of success. You would roll all of these and you would need uh, two hits. <laughs> Pretty safe. Now, if you wanted to gain a leadership, See, Amanda would maybe choose this. So that's why I'm pointing it out. You would probably, you might, you know, you might want to try crew versus crew in which you roll two and you need to get two hits. So that's what you have to do, Amanda. You got to do oh, some, that all? you got to do some boarding. Well, I think I'm going to go with the, whatever's the higher chance of success here. Okay, so you roll all these bad boys. You can draw a box around them and then hit R. Okay, well, I'm trying. Oh, there we go. Wow. Uh, you definitely succeeded. You do take one damage. Nice for all. And you gain a food, a silk, and a coin. Ooh. So that was successful. Money, there's a food and there's a silk. Now you'll be able to do your mission. Okay, and that's your turn. It goes to Amanda. All right. Um, I'm going to play this card. Uh, discard your current prospect card and immediately draw a new one. Okay. That thing, because that thing's junk. Uh, this should go back in my plunder deck, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So get rid of that. Oh yeah, you can't do that, can you? No, no, I'm never gonna get to it. So where's the prospect? They're up here. Oh, let me look at that. 
Oh, are you serious? Well, you got to spend leadership. No, deliver one silk to Tortuga. Yeah. What's wrong with yeah, that? I just sold all my silk. Well, bad planning on your part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's Tortuga? Is E. Kind of in the middle. Well, I can't sell. I can't buy and sell, so I'd have to go somewhere else to buy it, right? Yeah, it says on the on the card here you cannot buy it at Tortuga. And I can't go where somebody else's ship is. You can. No, like I can't go here. Yeah, you can. I can. Yeah, the ports are big she, enough to handle two ships. She just might attack me. Can't I? You can't really do that in port. Okay. You have to be in so, I'll pull port card. Oh, good. I'll still make a dollar on the silk. Um, merchants purchased illegally acquired goods at low prices. They would have to look the other way. Ah, oh, repair one damage at no cost. There you go. I don't have any damage left. Oh, you just spent money. <laughs> <laughs> I sold my silk to get money to. Damn, what were, you doing, what were you doing last turn? I don't know. All right, three silk. Three coins for a silk. Um, okay, so drop off three. See what's going on out here. Pick up a silk. And I believe, oh, I can do the bottom thing. Time for gambling. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it's me, so I'll so, probably roll on one or a three, but we're going to try it anyway, because, you know. I have faith fire. in you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Who's got the D10? There it is. All right. Oh, a four. I think that's nothing, but it's better than losing. Yeah. So that's I break highest, even. That's like the highest you've ever rolled. <laughs> right? Uh, okay. So I am done. Oh, yep. Thank you. All right. That has to be Charleston. Yeah. Oh, right. We're supposed to put uh, New Story. We forgot to put Arabella out there after this first red card got resolved. Which actually, Amanda, uh, I messed you right up, Amanda. What you do now? If you bought two silk in Charleston, you could have gone down here and got Arabella. Arabella. That's okay. A learning experience. I think I was over there trying to snip off artifacts of the th um, from the three D printer as it's printing. Probably not smart. All right, so I delivered the the passenger to Charleston okay. so or whatever. You get, a, you get a new prospect card. Uh, one supply to Bermuda. Um, and you get a port card because you're in Charleston. Yep. A wealthy port. Good for selling stuff, not so good for buying stuff. Yep. Although gambling's all right there. Nope. The payouts oh, are a little higher, but the loss is also bigger. So it's not a place where Amanda would want to gamble. And this is just this is just a raw D10 roll. Yes. Sure, why not? That's why not. Well, you can spend a guile and re-roll if you wish. <laughs> you got a lot of guile. You're guily. Yeah, it's not like I'm a. Uh... Coordinate or anything, right? So it's not like you don't get points or anything, right? The problem is he rolled the die near your player card, Amanda. 
he got too close. And yeah, I'm coming over here. You. I'll come over there, over here. <laughs> Seven. Seven. See, that was the issue. So you gain five gold. All right. Nice. Oh wait, I haven't know where to put it. Hold oh. on. Uh, you can throw a crew overboard. <laughs> I mean, you can. Well, the qu question <laughs> is, is whether I could actually pay to have this damage repaired first. Uh, you can. It costs. What you have to do is buy supply. Supply uh, repairs damage, but the supply is going to cost you five. So right. It would be a wash, but you'd remove a damage, I guess. Sure. So you might as well just, you know, do nothing but take the damage off. So, yeah. Still not a bad uh, trade. No. And I think that's it, right? That's it, yep. Okay, so I need to go to Port Royal. Where did my ship go? Oh my god! How did my did ship I, get all the oh, way over there? You're the blue ship. Did I move the wrong ship? I think so. Oh. Yeah, because I used to be over here. <laughs> all right, so. I was already here. I don't know what you did, Amanda. But if you say you did this, boom, boom. You can, can you do, do that? that? Yeah, you okay. can do that. Then I would have done that, yeah. And if I'm reading this right, I have to get to Port Royal there, right? I have to go here and then there, right? Yep. Which is fine. Okay, good. And then I need to turn over a port card, is that right? Uh, if you if you're resolving your prospect, which it looks like you are, right? I am. Yep. You put this up. You do that first. So you get rid of the three food. Oops. You take the treasure map. You take another prospect card. And that that's they want food in Guadalupe. Well, you're there. You're like you're like the food delivery service, and then you, <laughs> and then you flip a port card. She's like the Red Cross delivering. She's a good pirate. Yeah, what the heck is with that? All right, let me find it. All right. Um, okay. Wealthy port. All right, and the, wait, where's the thing? That's not it. That's not it. All right, so the new whatever, I need food again, right? And wh where do I need to take the food? Guadalupe, which is down in the south. Okay, Guadalupe. All right then. Uh, okay, well, why don't I, well, it's a wealthy port, so this stuff's going to cost more, right? I think I'm going to gamble first. Okay. And then see if I could buy some food with my winning, all right, where's this thing go? Okay, I'll put it over here. No, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Okay. I want to select everything known to humanity. Come on now. I swear I know how to use a mouse. Uh, all right. Our, our guess is it adds about 50% of the time to play a game on Tabletop Simulator if it's not really well scripted. Or Some games are different than others. Like this one's, I just feel like this one in person. I played this solitaire and it just goes so much faster. Okay, I'm sure. so woo, five gold, nice. There we go. I can just take one of these, right? And then put that here. 
Okay, so what, what you're trying to do with the treasure map, um, it's on this back of this card here. You need to take the treasure map to Rotan Island, which is K, and you roll five plunder die and multiply it by three, and that's how much gold is there. Wow. Nice. So Rotan is a pirate friendly island out here. Just gotta make sure you have room on your ship for it. Now you can always go back to the other a couple other minor things I forgot. You can always go back to your hideout to drop off uh, gold and stuff that you can't carry. No one can no one can take it from there. Uh. Uh -huh. There's probably some other useful little tidbits that I forgot to tell people. <laughs> Well, I've learned that no matter what, the first time you play a game, you always play it wrong. So I guess well, it's true even when you have the creator of the game. You're not playing it wrong. I'm just, just <laughs> not telling you everything. Not telling us all the rules. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to buy a food because I can only afford one. Well, I guess I could afford more than one, but I'm cheap. Well, you only need one. I thought I needed three. No, you did that part already. This is deliver one food to Guadalupe. Oh, okay. So they gave you the treasure map. If you take that if treasure, you pay if you take that <laughs> treasure map over here, I think this needs to go there. A lot of money. Guadalupe is the opposite direction, so you're gonna have to choose which way to go. Quit it. No, really, I just want to take this one thing. Not everything. Wow, this is You're really when I start getting like, wow, my hand-eye coordination is horrible. Okay. Um, you know, a little of it's your connection speed or whatever. It, you know, that makes it harder too. Although it's not horrible. Yeah, I'll be honest. There's a reason why I never played video games. <laughs> all right so uh, okay i got my food i got the thing and then whatever okay awesome i think that's all i need from these people okay what are you gonna do now amanda just stay in that port the whole game <laughs> i don't think that's a good way to do it no move i other, need to go move other, that. move other people's ships Deliver one silk to Tortuga. So I'm going to go here. And I resolve this, right? Now? You resolve it. Yeah. So I drop that off. I get one VP and a captain skill. Is that what that says? And then what yep. does that K and then mean? K, K becomes Spanish. Ah. Is that my new prospect card? Oh. Do I still draw a port card? Yes. Okay. You always draw a port card when you're in port, as long as you're in favor with the controlling forces. Okay. So and I will it's draw. Interesting, you got a captain's card because now you have to go drop off a captain's card. Oh, the port okay. cards are all empty. Yeah, I think they all got picked up at once. We'll just shuffle them up and do that. Okay. Friendly port merchants uh, purchase legally acquired goods at low prices. They're always happy to look the other way. Repair at no damage. Um, I don't really need to buy or sell anything. I don't need anything, so I'm just gonna gamble. I decided to embrace the pirate way of life. Good plan. Ooh, a six. I think that's good. Yes, I get three coins. I'm rich. Uh, that's, well, I can buy more crew, can I? If, the, if they sell it at the port, yeah. They do. I'm going to buy a new crew with that gambling. Can we just pretend that I gambled and won some crew members. Sure. So, so impressed with my gambling um, skills. Can I ask y'all a question here? So each of these captains, let's see if I can, is drawn on wood. 
um, what size is that? Someone's hand, so it's probably like five by, um, and then the gold, which I can't get this at the beginning of the video, but the gold on all of them, is that like gold leaf stuff? Maybe you can see it in this. I don't know if you can see it. So this will be part of the Kickstarter that you can buy these guys. That's neat. Wow. Switch over. But I'll just have to figure out. I don't know how much to uh, auction, uh, not auction, but you know, list those for. Is that just one of them? Just one set? One of each pirate. Uh, yeah, well, they're hand painted, you know. She, she right. did a pretty amazing job. And that's the artwork that's on the cards, too? That's the artwork that's on the captain cards, yeah. I wanted her to do Anne Bonnie in her own image. I think that would be cool, right? <laughs> She's yeah. like, no, no, I don't want to do that. I was like, ah, because no one knows what Anne Bonnie looked like. Um, I didn't realize Anne Bonnie was 16 years old. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> yeah, when so, she first started. <laughs> yeah. What was the thing I heard today? Oh, uh, once in a while, if there was a woman on the ship and she got pregnant, the, the best place where they had the most space was between the cannons. And so they'd go there to have them give birth to the baby. And that's where the term, term son of a gun comes from. Huh. Uh, from pirate Son ship. of a gun. Son of a gun. <laughs> How about that? All right, I finished my turn. Are crew worth anything at the end of the game? One, one, uh, one fifth of a point. So, Take, what is sign up your crew cannon tokens? So, if you bought, did you get two silk at Charleston? Oh no, I did not because it's. It was expensive. It was crazy expensive. So now, okay. what does Arabella represent as, a, as a, far as the game is concerned? Eight victory points. But I have to do what? Pick her up and take her where? Uh, just hold on to her until the end of the uh, game. She can be uh, plundered okay. off of your ship, however. All right. But let's do that. We'll go here. You have to you to get her to go on your ship. You have to give her two silk from Charleston. However, oh, that's that's, I see. All right. So now I have. Do I have to stick with this? If I stay in the port, am I? I'm flipping a new port card. Yeah. All right. So I'll stay in port. Hope you don't get the. Yeah, I got the whole deck again. Yep, I see it. Hopefully, you don't get the wealthy one again. Here, I'll, I'll get it for you. And it's not wealthy. They sell silk Friendly. for two each. All right. I am cheap. All right, so. <laughs> Gee, if you need more guile, you could sort of arrange a meeting with a shady, influential local to make an arrangement. <laughs> Uh, okay, so silk was what two? Yeah, silk yep. is two. Silk is two. Uh, repair damage is two. So that's six. Oops, you get four back, right? Yeah, I'm trying to see. Oh, you need uh, to buy a supply, though, don't you? Yeah. Which is two. That's cheap. That's Another cheap. two. So I buy a supply and then return it. Oh, wait. Or, oh, you're talking yeah, about for this. Yeah. That's got to go to Bermuda. It's just... So the in terms like of it, the... Um, 
strategy in the long run, you get points for those prospect cards, which give you direction, but you get more points for plundering. So after you play it a couple of times, you start to realize plundering is because it is a pirate. Yeah. Game. But you certainly can trade and do those things. Ouch. All right. Um... We got five cards in there. Yeah, so story cards move along, then they stop. I, that's pretty much my turn, right? I took my two back. Yep. I think so. Hey. What was that? So I have to be making my way to Guadalupe, which is way over there. Okay. So or, I have to go one. What? Or um, over here to. I'll be right back. Treasure map. Right. But I think I want to go to Guadalupe first and get rid of some stuff so I have room. Okay. Right, so or you can take it to your hideout. Don't forget. So where's my hideout? Yeah, way over here. Yeah, find it first. Yeah, it's pretty far. Eh. All um, right, Guadalupe it is. All right. So that's that was one. And then actually, you got a lot of singles here. Two, I think. All your stuff can be stacked, actually. Let me see if I can figure out where I if I'm in the right place. Here you are. One, two. Okay, good. Then we do the sail card. Because you found a disabled ship, you can add a supply to your ship. Yay! And, and that is these guys, the barrels. The barrels. Yeah, okay. I just put one on for you. And Thank I, you. You've run into a Spanish warship. Oh, great. So you can either, looking for the die. Um, there it is. You can either um, spend two leadership to avoid it or roll the die and add your maneuverability of five to try to avoid it. And anything above a nine is no damage. So if you roll okay. a five or higher, all right, yeah, you have a 50% chance of not taking damage. All right, that sounds like a pretty good chance to me, hopefully. And you, you can, can spend it. a leadership to re-roll, so is that a 75% chance? I don't know. All right, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Nope. You rolled it too close to Amanda. So you can, spend, <laughs> you can, if you wish, you could spend a leadership or seven is, seven is two damage. All right, let's spend our leadership. Hopefully that's gonna help. When will you learn I am the cursed pirate? And I will curse your dice. Roll it further from Amanda. You didn't roll it far enough away from Amanda. <laughs> Exactly the same. Ugh. So the spots you have for damage are on your sails and over here. So uh, the good thing is you could be seen at night with all the flames. <laughs> and you gain a leadership back. Hey, that could have been good. <laughs> Yeah, Amanda, you need to run into Spanish warships. That's what you need. All right, I'll go. Go on the hunt. So did you get rid of the whole warship counting thing? Yes, replaced it with the story cards. OK. I kind of like that. What's, what's that? I prefer the story cards. Oh, OK. We haven't advanced that story deck in a while. It's just it's so hard to pace it. So I look forward to your suggestions, Amanda. Because <laughs> we hit a bunch yeah. of those, and then now there's been yeah. nothing. Are you done, Trish? 
Yes, she is. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yes, I am. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go which direction? Well, you're going to go where's, north. Where's I? Why do I have to go north? That's oh. the only place you can go. Yeah. I is down here. They're and only merciful friendlies can get merciful people get into the court. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start going this way. One, two. I'm going to get a sale card. I can't believe you didn't trust Trish. Well, I just we've run into each other before. I don't need to. A Spanish sergeant who was pressed into service asks for his freedom to do his fair share among the pirates. Don't just stand there, bring them aboard. The sergeant improves crew performance. So I add an additional crew, right? It allows you to put two, you do add an additional one, but you add it into a space where you have a crew. Okay. So it makes that crew function better without taking up more space. Mm, or do I turn them in? I'm gonna add them, why not? Those Spanish made him work. Hope that gets me closer to five. Um, and then I reveal these two. Oh, good, not yep. storm. Just making notes. That should say bring him aboard, not them aboard. Well, it also says something about meeples, which is kind of confusing because they're not using meeples. But oh, good point. Oh yeah. Well, I have the wrong. That's fine. All right, that's my turn, right? Nothing gets resolved there. I will plunder next action. Well, now you... Uh... All right. Uh, how do I say that? Oh, what was I doing? I was moving <laughs> towards this. What would you call this, Amanda? Crew, not token. Figure. It's actually going to be three crew, though. One crew figurine. <laughs> um, maybe. But there's three crew figurines in a. But it's still one. I know what you're saying. I don't know if anybody watching has suggestions. Yeah, so there's yeah three. Well, let's see. I have them right here. This is going to be one small game box, uh, by the way. Sarcasm? Yes. But the cool thing is this thing. You know, come. I'll have all these dividers come with it, so you can just. Oh, nice. Because it's got a lot of cards, so. Right. Keeping stuff organized, I think, is important. Mm-hmm. Um. The pirate ship has a lot more detail than what you can put on tabletop simulator. Right. So hopefully those will be the mo and. Crew is a rough print. Where are you? They're at the tavern getting drunk. Apparently, but it's like three of them around a barrel. Focus on this camera, focus on this, not me. <laughs> so it's three, you know, one with a pistol, two with sword. Three individuals, but it's one. Yeah, and they're all around the barrel to sort of unify them. So, I mean, maybe you could still call it a token. It's not really a token, though. Piece, one crew piece. Piece. I could just maybe say one crew. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because it's not a crew member. A crew is more than one person, right? Yeah. Through set. Cohort. Cohort. 
Are you done, Eric? Not quite. I need to. Okay. I was going to get Arabella. So I don't know what. Is there a piece that I put in? Yeah, or I just down in the. Or I just put her in the I guest. Your, yeah, you take her right off of there. Put on your. Hey, thanks, Trish. Should we go relieve Arabella of? Leave him of the Arabella. He's pretty far away. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll just stick stick with my plundering on the East Coast. Is it cold? Uh, it takes a while, you know? I don't want them right now. See if um, Elizabeth wants one. Hard to do unless you have an initiative card, and then you can get over there and plunder another pirate. But without the initiative card, they kind of have to start their turn in your space. So do I have to do a port card? Uh, yep. Nope. Let's try it again. Hey, no? Looks like I got it this time. Yes. Did Amanda, did you deal with this English warship or not? Ah. Take my ass. Cats are driving me nuts. I thought it was just a regular ship. It is with lots of guns. <laughs> I wish oh, there was some way perfect. to show like this is something you deal with right away. Well, you do get a leadership out of it. That could be good. So what that it was just a dice minus or plus my if it, yeah. It's die minus. plus your maneuverability minus out of favor, which incredibly you don't have any out of favor. That's because I got pardoned. That's true. I was out of favor. Roll it as far away from you as you can. All right. Four, four eight. plus four is eight. Not high enough. Two damage, but you gain a leadership. I think the only one who has a chance of getting the silk from Charleston is Eric, really. I think he already got he already got Arabella. He already got it. Yeah. Um, but you can you'd have to steal her off of his ship. Okay. Now once he put her at his hideout, she'd be absolutely safe. And my hideout is on in Cuba. Oh. Yeah. The tip of Cuba. But it would be very hard to plunder you because um, what happens is you get to try to run away and you can use your maneuverability to do that. And you have a six maneuverability. Right. So uh, you're probably safe, except if you have a bad roll. A bad roll? How could that happen? Uh, if Amanda rolled the deck. Too close to Amanda. <laughs> All right. You better plunder that Spanish large merchant. Is it my turn? Yeah, it's still your turn. I, I don't think okay. it ever got shifted. Or no, maybe it's not. Oh, it's Trish's turn. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I had to roll that from last time because I screwed up. It's Trish's turn. All right. Turn. So I got to go one. Is that two there? This you came from here, so one, two. You can make it to Guadalupe. Woohoo! Yay! All right, Guadalupe, you can have your food. Yay! If you're merciful, you get another five coin, but you're not. And St. Kitts is now closed. You can go there, but you just can't draw the port card. And now you, they want you to go to Caracas, which is pretty darn close. You still get to draw, a, and they want food again, of course, because you are the food chip. 
and you do Master get to, chef. You, you do get to draw um just, just the love boat um you do get to draw <laughs> a port card while in guadalupe all right i bet they sell food nope hold back ah crap here thank you Oh, it's the wealthy port. They sell expensive food. Uh, well, let's see. I need to... The um, repair, how, how much is that? The wealthy port doesn't have repair. You could oh, buy great. supply and repair with that, which would cost you five each damage. I wouldn't recommend it. That's a victory mm -hmm. point per damage. No, I think uh, I'll gamble first and see what happens there. That's true. Good place to do that. Let's try the gambling first, shall we? Okay. Seven. That's not bad. All right. Gets you five, I think. Gets me five. Uh, what I think it is now. Okay. One of these guys. Where did you go? Crazy thing. All right, there we go. All right, so then. Well, let's see. Maybe I want to spend. Four on the food for the, where the heck am I going? <laughs> well, I don't know. It depends if you're going to, your treasure map is at the opposite end of the board, but you don't have space to put anything. Um, also, at any point, you can use the supply to repair damage. I'm just the thing I'm throwing at everybody. Do I already have a supply on the ship? Yes, I do. You do. All right, so I'm going to use one of those to repair a damage. Uh, hmm. I have two damage or three damage? I almost had three you had, damage. You had, you had three. One was on your sales. All right. All right. Let's see what else do I have. Um, do I want to spend the five and get another supply? Hmm. All right, let's do, I'm going to spend the five and get rid of another one of these damage. And then I'm gonna plan to do the treasure map thing, I think. Okay, so Trish, you got all sorts of stuff in your hand, <laughs> like 30 gold. Yeah, I don't know how that stuff oh, even got there. Okay. <laughs> but I don't think it probably She's belongs there. Pirate. And then you have two prospect cards. I... Or no, they're sale cards. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is the only stuff that actually belongs there. Yeah. Oh, now I have this secret contact. Your contact can get act access to a restricted port. Right. Actually says port, port. <laughs> um, port, port. Yeah, port, port. Yeah, the port, port. It does say that, doesn't it? Yeah. So uh, I don't think I necessarily want to do that, but th is that if you wanted to go to um, St. Kitts, you could do it? 
Yes. I don't think I do, but. <laughs> but, but let's say uh, along the way to the treasure map, uh, you get out of favor with the Spanish, you'd be able to land here and draw a port card still. Because these may change hands as we go here. All right. So off I'm going to plan to go to, uh, what you, who's this? Ro, is it Roatan? Ro Ro I don't know. I don't know, over there. Rotan, Rotan, it's French, so I can't say it. Rotan. Either. Okay, so uh, I think that makes me done. Can't wait All right. Amanda's I'm going. plundering this ship. Really? Yeah. rolling die. Yeah, but I got a lot of crew. They got my back. Okay. At least till I blow up. All right. So I draw two of these things. Yeah. Did you shuffle? Oh, wait. No. No, I'm a pirate. I stacked my deck. All right. Chain shot or outflank. So chain shot would be my number of cannons, which is not great. Oh my gosh. Oh, so the number of maneuverability. Yeah, my maneuverability is four. Theirs is what? No, you're going against their cannon. Oh, my maneuverability versus their cannon. Yikes. So you need four hits. Why do I need four? Because they have a three cannon. Right? And you have, you're uh, you're using this card, so it compares your maneuverability to their cannon. Right. They have, am I reading their card wrong? They have three cannons, so you need greater than cannon. Oh, greater than. It doesn't have to be equal. You should make it greater than or equal to. No. No. Yeah. For those of us who can't roll. OK. I'm sure it'll go fine. Look at that roll. One, two, three, four, five. You Boom. You speeded without taking three damage from their cannon. See, I told you. So I get to take the ship? Yep, you put it right there. Boom. And what do I get? Uh, and that will end my turn. Yeah, and you get 13 gold. A nice. You lose two out of favor with the Spanish. Yeah. I'll pile that up. Thanks. And one and another, another captain's card. Yeah, it's Eric's yeah. card. All right. Well, I think the safest thing for me to do is get Arabella to my hideout, maybe. You don't uh, trust so that's too? no, I don't. Do not. All yeah, right. I'm shocked. <laughs> hey, flip one card off the story deck. I just get one. I mean, Dan, have you have you tried just like each round of story goes? Like at the beginning of the round? Uh, Navy has sent out patrols. They are specifically looking to protect their merchants by seeking out and destroying pirate ships, their captain and crew. Any player with a ship in a sector with a face-up ship, roll plunder die equal to the number of cannon, take damage equal to the number of hits rolled. There That's are nobody. No... Yep. So. Yeah, I think maybe a way to advance story cards more frequently. All right, I think I'm getting the hang of this. So, um, do we need to end at 10 o'clock? Because we're past that. Because do you have another event? We don't, I, but, but I mean... It's if... bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's getting need, late. You know, whenever yeah. you need to end, just let me know and I'll, we can do a quick score. Who started? Eric did? Do you just want to finish out this round? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, here's the actual sail card. Captain, one of the crew has rigged explosives to the rudder. 
he is demanding a ransom that we drop him off at the next port. Uh, so option one is a die roll. These are empty threats. Throw him overboard. One to six at a damage token. Seven to ten, it was a bluff. Um, <clears throat> fine, but if I ever see his face again, you tell him that he's a dead man. Discard three gold. So, uh, ooh. I don't have a lot of space for damage. But what the heck? One damage, not a big deal. Where's that die? Um, oh, it's over by me. Don't roll it close to me, remember? No, I'm, I'm taking it to the complete opposite side of the table. <laughs> and I'm rolling. It works ten. every time, a 10. <laughs> yeah, I'll move it back over here near the setup button. Yeah, just keep it away from the vortex here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we flip the two closest, right? This one. And the... Ooh. All right, so that's yep. a thing there, a storm. So, all right, so on a one to four, I take, take two, two damage. damage. Yep, and either way you'll gain a captain's skill card. All right. Is that a two? Yep. All right. So two damage. And that's my turn. All right. All right. So my goal would is to get over here. Well, if you're only doing one more turn, though. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not getting there. <laughs> no. That's why Amanda changed the rules on you. I mean, we can keep going. No, I got to take care of some stuff too, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it was mostly to learn how to play it anyway. Yep. Right. Besides, I'm winning, so I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think you are. But we'll <laughs> you never know. Well, let's see. Yeah, we'll do we'll do a quick add up. You've only you've plundered one ship. One ship. And has plundered two. Yeah, a huge difference. The play testers plunder a lot more. Mm-hmm. Well, I think part of it is making it more clear in the beginning that ships are worth more. How do you do that? Hmm. I mean, not me telling you, but right in the rule book. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. it. It's just, I think the first, it's going to be like one of those games the first time you play. Sure. I don't know. So have you tried doing it where like at the end of each round the story comes out? Um, we could, it would pace things a lot more evenly. Uh, it's just like, so much, so much stuff an, to keep track of we're trying to reduce. Is an even pace something you're looking for? Because I feel like it's very uneven. Like at first I was like, oh man, this game's going to be over soon. Yes. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh gosh, this game's dragging it's, on. Right. Right. So. right. Um, no, that would be the way to do it. Except mm. uh, uh, the number of players. I'm going to think this through. So if you played with four players, well, everyone would get the same number of rounds, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The game would be four times as long with four players than it would be with solitaire.
Mm, I'll maybe change right. the rules for solitaire. Well, read that, I mean, Trisha. The trade-off here is the game, in theory, although it doesn't seem to be that way, is to be the same length with four players as it is with one. It mm -hmm. typically isn't, but because but the, in a four-player game, you get one quarter of the number of actions. Um, yeah. So by doing the story cards every round, you'd always have the same number of actions, but the game length would depend on the number of players. Which is okay. okay. You know, you can say uh, 30 minutes per player is a thing you can do. Mm -hmm. All right. So Trish, Tr Trish were you done? Well, your turn? She was stumped as to what to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, basically time. I got stuck. I mean, I guess I can go one, two. Oh, so kind of knowing exactly when the game is going to end. Oh, there's a sale card you get to draw first. Okay. Well, that's not good. The crew's not happy with you. Terrific. <laughs> she gave all their food away. Why are we just going around getting food? I think Quality food is short. You literally, you literally well, gave all your food away. <laughs> you know, you, you could have plundered the food. Okay. Decrease leadership or share some additional coin with them. Uh, I'll decrease leadership. What the heck? I can take it. As long as there's not a warship here. There you go. It's not. And then it goes on to Amanda doing whatever she's going to do. I'm going to move up here. I'm going to get a sale card. Oh, wait. Before I do that, though, I'm going to play this initiative card. So I get two turns. Yeah. So I'm going to. Oh, look, advances. <laughs> uh, pardon. If. It's not. If NASA is pirate friendly, all the players get an English pardon. It's not pirate friendly, so you don't. You could choose okay. to advance it again, too. Jibber, 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 jibber. I got another one that needs a story. Well, Option you can, one. Or you can gain a leadership, which. Leadership. Sure, why not? Uh, and then these get flipped. So a Spanish slave ship and an English merchant ship. Um, I'm going to attack the Spanish slave ship as my second turn. Okay. Right? Yeah. Right. So full plunder. Oop, that went my hand. Oh, wait. Did I shuffle these? Keep an eye on sure you shuffle. Two. All right, cannons versus crew, or my cannons? Why is it always my cannons? What do I do to draw another one? Spend a leadership. All this time you've been complaining about not having enough leadership, <laughs> and you had a card in your hand that increases your leadership. Do I? Inspired song. I just got that. Like. Oh, all right. Time. All right, uh, my speed versus their crew. So my speed is four, their crew is two. So I roll four dice plus the captain's dice. <laughs> I believe I got it. But I also take, what is that? One damage per cannon they have? Yes. How many cannons do they have? Two. That's exactly the amount of damage I can take. <laughs> so I plunder that ship. Yeah, this game is a lot faster in real life. 
Yeah, it's well, when you could script that you just get everything on your ship from the plunder. Yeah, that's not what's taking forever. It's like dragging the card and Yeah, I know. You gotta reach over look over here, look up this is the game that's So do I get a crew? Yeah, this is the game But I can't know, fit them anywhere. Know where to put them. But yeah, this is the game that's the worst one to play on tabletop simulator. Yeah. All right, and that's game. Yeah, and so we don't have to do the scoring, but basically you'd add up one point per, or I'm sorry, every five, like, so Trish has like three coin, two crew, and a cannon. So three, four, five, six. So she'd have one victory point there plus a victory point from her two prospects. So there'd be two there. Uh, one, two, three, then a victory point from the merchant you plundered. So that's four. I think you'd have four. Um, you guys got more gold, but it's 10. 12. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's three victory points plus eight from Arabella plus two more for the Spanish ship. You lose one for the damage and two, two. for this. I lost track, but that's like somewhere around 20, I think. And then Amanda is gonna lose four for the damage, but one, two, three victory points, probably a bad way to do that. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So that's five victory points. Six. You plundered more than one show. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 victory points minus the four damage. Uh, I don't know if anyone got three Spanish ships, did you? I uh, know. Nope. I was going for it, but... Yeah. So, yeah, Eric would have won, but... So that's that. Yeah, it's. I. It, this is a tough game for Tabletop Simulator, I think. Yeah, and just the, the time, the pacing of it. Like you said, that's what you're working on. Yeah. Just trying not to have it any more fidgety or like things to remember to do. And that's that's the hard part about flipping the story card every time, but maybe that is the way to do it. It would make it more even paced. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that would be I mean, I think the e even pacing would make up for the change in timing and that and needing to remember yeah. to do it. And I, could yeah. just well, I, th I think you know. too, what you can do is, you know, uh, obviously maybe consider pulling story cards out or some number of story cards out to speed up the game for a short game. And that way, you know, the pacing is something that you can control a little bit more directly as a well, player. It's still very, it's random. I mean, because in theory, all of the story cards could all be at the bottom of every deck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so by flipping at the end of each round, or I guess I have to think about the solitaire play. But other than that, I don't, you know, in a three player, two player, it's not so bad to flip it. I have to come up with a lot more story cards. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> Um, oh, you got to finish those other ones too, because I got two cards I had no. Yeah, I know. Okay. We're, we're, we're close on this, but you know, Madoshi's coming in Tuesday, so I'm actually going to have it copy with me when we go to screen. Okay. Your copies. Um, and that we've, I've been gearing up for Usurp the King, promoting that. So this is next. And the uh, woman who's doing the um, the project about um, dementia finally mm -hmm. got stuff done, so okay. that's that's coming. So that'll be a huge. That's that's what I've been really looking forward to. But, 
And unfortunately, um, or, or whatever, I'm not sure, unfortunately, fortunately, but the it's called the Art of Conversation. So the website is actually uh, AOC. <laughs> so a little political, but <laughs> it's all right. But anyway. All right, well. Uh, well thanks for showing us the game. And yep. Yeah, thanks a lot. forward to being able to try it in person. Yeah, in person, any game, any game in person where I'm excited about. <laughs> Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys. Well, thank you yep. again. Thanks see so much later. for showing us the game. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.